Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. And today I'm going to talk about a sensitive subject that is pretty current. We're going to talk about being a biomed during an epidemic, like right now with COVID-19. See, the problem is, is it shouldn't be that big of an issue if you did what you're supposed to do on the everyday situation, which biomeds don't. Um, we travel from ward to ward throughout the day. We travel more than nurses. We travel more than patient transport. We communicate with patients, doctors, nurses, more frequently than anybody else in the hospital generally. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is that most biomed shops and most biomeds in general don't wash their hands that often and they don't keep hand sanitizer and necessities like gloves, proper PPE. Biomeds are some of the worst at uh, keeping proper PPE and using proper procedures. And I'm being real with you guys right now because I've gone to my share of shops and they don't have hand san sanitizer readily available. They uh, don't even have paper towel by the sink. You can tell if the sink is full of garbage they're obviously not washing their hands, now are they? So uh, I just wanted to show you guys a few things. And, and this is coming from uh, a deep-rooted personal history with, with some sicknesses. So uh, back in, what, 2013, I think 2014, I actually got meningitis from work. And if you guys don't know, meningitis is a very, very nasty disease. And uh, it's swelling in your brain and swelling in your spinal column. And that swelling causes disorientation, um, inability to control temperature, body temperature, uh, inability to control your own heart rate sometimes, um, light sensitivity, inability to focus. You can't think straight. Your equilibrium is off because part of that swelling also goes back here to your eustachian tubes. And... Um, you feel like you're drunk all the time, which is not fantastic. Um, a lot of things that we take for granted, uh, your ability to, to breathe correctly, control your body temperature, balance, um, all that stuff will be affected if you get meningitis. And at that time, I had a, between like six and seven uh, ER visits and uh, Eventually, it's one of those things that if you get the viral meningitis, you just have to work it out. And it took me about six months. Now, if you could imagine six months of like throwing up, not controlling your body temperature, uh, basically feeling like you're dying all the time. And at the time, I was what, uh, 30, 32, 33, something like that. But it, it was a real wake-up call for me. And uh, at at the time, you know, I was already pretty cautious about some of the things I do, but uh, I just need to step it up because the realization is, is that as a biomed in the military, you're generally going to be around normally kind of healthy people. I mean, you don't have to deal with uh, a lot of the bloodborne pathogens because we're screened as military members. Uh, a lot of the more severe illnesses, you would be an inpatient at some other place. You won't stay at a military clinic or a military hospital. Um, you're going to be inpatient someplace else. So generally, a biomed in the military is going to be around reasonably healthy patients. Now, in 2012, when I got out of the military, it was a very crude wake-up call. I was suddenly around geriatric patients, old people, bariatric patients, which are severely overweight patients, and uh, a lot of drug addicts and you never know what they have you know i've seen drug addicts that have a laundry list of diseases and it's it's really crazy because as a military biomed you have some leeway with your own um your own personal hygiene uh and your own ppe have habits so um when i came into the civilian world and i started seeing all this nasty stuff um, I stepped it up and then I got very sick and I had to step it up even further. So now I am, um, 
I'm one of those people that will come into an area and I will definitely complain if I don't have things like gloves, proper wipes. I mean, you'll see people working on equipment that's got uh, dried heme on it or dried blood. Uh, it's just it's just crazy that people will pick up a foot control that's still leaking blood with their bare hands, mind you. But so that brings me back to this this whole situation. As a biomed, dealing with a situation like COVID-19, obviously one of the first things that you got to worry about is proper PPE. You got gloves and your masks. That's going to take care of most of your problems. Uh, when you touch any medical device, you should be washing your hands after every time, even after you take off your gloves. And the thing is, is like almost nobody does. Almost nobody does. And a lot of you efforts that are out there watching this, I know a lot of you guys don't. I mean, Hell, I, I've gone to the, the bathroom many times, and I, I hear people that leave the bathroom without even turning on the faucet. I see it all the time. It's like, you dirt bastards. But uh, I'm just telling you guys that this is, this is some serious stuff. Um, it is a respiratory illness, so it will be communicated uh, from coughing and from touching uh, surfaces that are contaminated. And that's something that we need to be cautious for. Uh, if you go into an elevator full of crowded people, you know, you should keep a mask on you. Now, since I work on surgery, uh, I always have a mask just down here around my neck anyway. And if I'm in an elevator or something, you know, I can just pop my mask up. And if somebody's coughing, it doesn't bother me nearly as bad. But you know what happens. You're going to be on an elevator full of crowded people. And some jackass over there is going to be coughing without even trying to cover their mouth. It happens all the time. I was at... Uh, the store right around the corner here, it was just a regular Kroger. The lady behind me started coughing and uh, she looked at me and she goes, oh, it's just allergies. And then the lady in the line next to us goes, oh, I can tell it's definitely allergies because it was a dry cough. It wasn't a wet cough. And the whole time I'm thinking, you dumb chicks, you don't even know what the heck you're talking about. You don't know what it is. I mean, the, the problem with this disease is that you could be a carrier and infectious for weeks before you even have true symptoms. I mean, yes, there is lots of pollen in the air. We're in the southern United States. But th this is a very serious topic for me. I mean, my family's pretty much caged up here at this house. and <laughs> They're driving me crazy at the moment. And they're awesome and everything. But, you know, everybody gets a little tense when they've been penned up for a little bit. And uh, we can't go out to stores. We can't go out to parks. I mean, we're actually kind of homebound at the moment. But, uh... As a healthcare worker, uh, I'm going back to work tomorrow. It's Monday, and uh, we never know what we're going to run into. Now, Texas started at 22, 23, and then it jumped up within 24 hours. Now, last I've seen, we're at 61 cases. And all the experts will agree that the tested cases are just a fraction of the population that are currently carrying this illness. It's a fraction. Now, if you look online, it says 61 confirmed cases in Texas that's confirmed. That means that they've failed the test. They've been tested. Imagine all the other people that are currently awaiting testing or awaiting results. Uh, there's people that are in denial. That's a big one. It's people in denial. So this is going to blow up. It's much bigger than what we currently think it is. And it's not about whether or not its mortality rate is extremely high. Who wants to be sick for a month? It's for a month, and, and we all have loved ones that are geriatrics. They're, we got senior citizens that are family members. I mean, just think, you could, you could be a carrier. You could go up and you could hug one of your family members, and that could be fatal. I mean, it's a very, very serious illness when you consider, like, babies and old people are, you know, they're the target audience for this disease. So I take it very seriously. I myself have a 2-year-old and a 5-year-old. And, uh, you know, like any parent, it hurts me when, whenever I see that they're sick. So I take extra precautions on their behalf. But when I'm at work, it's, I'm very serious. I have a change of clothes when I get to work. I keep a mask around my neck. My toolbox, my, I actually keep mitts like these. I keep them in my tool bag, in my roll around tool chassis. I've got hand sanitizer. I've got I've got a whole cabinet full of this hand sanitizer because 
they were basically throwing it out. It was left in a construction site. So I snuck in behind the barrier and uh, me and one of my associates were emptying out all the uh, wall hanging dispensers because they just left them there. And here we are at almost a national shortage on these things and these guys are just leaving it for construction debris. I can't believe it. But guys, this is a very serious illness. Let's take it seriously. Wash your hands. And if you are the one that's doing the coughing, wear a mask all the time. All the time. I mean, don't just like flip the mask up when you're coughing. If you're coughing, we don't know what it is yet. It takes a couple of weeks. And anybody could be a carrier. You would never know that you came in contact with somebody. I mean, somebody could be one week into it. They have yet another week before they show symptoms. And here you are like shaking their hand or whatever. So that's where this becomes a very serious issue. Use hand sanitizer. Use gloves when you're fixing all medical equipment. And keep a mask on you. Keep it handy. And don't touch your face. So that's how I feel about this whole disease, guys. It's going to get way worse before it gets better. And I, I can tell already, if you guys don't know, I work at the Texas Medical Center, which is the world's biggest medical complex. So if there's going to be patients, even remotely around Texas, that are going to come down with this, they're going to, they're going to come over here by my shop. And they're, they're going to be my neighbors for a little bit. So, a lot of you guys are in the same predicament. You work at large facilities. You might not know it, but I didn't know it. My facility went around telling us that they had nobody that they were currently treated at my facility. And then less than 24 hours later, I had a senior level biomed show up with a flyer that he ripped down from the wall um, that was actually talking about the requirements to enter a certain secret ward that was in one of the other towers. So they had a ward set up secretly for, for testing and treating COVID patients without even telling us that they were doing it in our building. So that's how it is. And uh, we just have to be aware that it's out there. It's around us at all times. And uh, you never know who's going to have it. It's not like many other diseases where you can see the sniffles and whatnot. They could be carrying it and showing zero symptoms. So that's all I got for you guys. Take care. I hope you all stay safe and take care of your families right now, okay? Hope you liked the video. Stay safe.